I'm Clive Oppenheimer and I'm Professor of Volcanology in the Department of Geography here at the University of Cambridge. When I've been filming on the volcanoes it's mostly been because I've had a little bit of time while the equipment that I'm using to monitor the volcano is doing its thing and collecting data and now I've got time to pick up my camera or video camera and start taking photographs, having a look around and actually experiencing and sensing uh, the extraordinary environment that you find yourself in uh, when you're working on an active volcano. I, I think everyone should, if they have the opportunity once in their life, go and see an erupting volcano. There are one or two more or less benign ones, like Stromboli in Italy. And I think for a, a painter, the thing is that you're capturing something um, that, that's going to be static, uh, but there's actually a very dynamic phenomenon that's changing every second, um, particularly you know, if I'm talking about an eruption of lava or ash clouds soaring into the sky. So I think uh, one of the things that you need to think about as a painter is how, how do I convey that sense of flow, of motion, of fluids, whether it's ash clouds soaring into the sky or lava flows following the flanks of the cone. We have a lot of very sophisticated tools to monitor volcanoes now and measure the, the earthquakes and the tremors and the gases that pour out of them, we can observe them from satellites up in orbit around the Earth. But we're still asking the same questions about volcanoes that natural scientists were asking 200, 250 years ago. Uh, people like William Hamilton, uh, who was in Naples and studying Vesuvius. Uh, one of my heroes, Lazzaro Spallanzani, in the 18th, second half of the 18th century, went to Stromboli. And uh, he was asking, you know, what, what makes these explosions that I'm seeing, these bursts uh, of, of uh, fire and lava bombs flying around, what's, where's the energy coming from? And of course, we know a lot more now. But we're still asking the fundamental questions about uh, how, how do we predict a, a volcanic eruption? How, how do we use that knowledge to protect populations? The film that I put together for this exhibition draws on footage that I took on quite a few field trips over the years. Uh, starting in 2006, when I was collaborating with a German-Italian artist, Armin Linke, uh, and we made a, a video installation. So some of the footage of the lava lakes goes back to that time, and there's footage from last year, uh, the eruptions of La Palma and uh, Fagradals Fjatla in Iceland. Uh, one of the themes that goes through it is, is fluids, is the dynamics, is the flow. And if, if you have the advantage of cinematography, then, then you, you can really go out of your way to try and convey that it, everything is in flux. The lava is in flux, the gas is in flux, the lava bombs and the ash clouds. I've worked uh, an, a few times on Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii, and the volcano Kilauea, which is the home of the goddess Pele. And uh, she was very, very active uh, in, in the last years, particularly since 2008. And the summit crater filled with a lake of lava very, very spectacular, and it, the, there are sites where the gas is bubbling through very vigorously, and you have fire fountains, and this bubbling draws out the liquid and stretches it into something like fiberglass. And then it's carried up by the wind and deposited around the edge of the crater, and it looks spectacular. It, it, it builds up in drifts, and depending on where the sun is, it either looks golden uh, and greeny gold color, uh, with an incredible sheen or it looks very dark but the the really remarkable thing is it, it has the pliability the flexibility of human hair and so it's, it's a really astonishing material and uh, that i've not seen anything like it uh, not not in such abundance on any other volcano i drew the title the living earth from uh, it's an essay that uh, was about the last thing one of my volcano heroes frank parrott wrote sometime around 1940 and he was a real pioneer. He, he had uh, been one of Edison's engineers. He invented an electric car a little bit too early for market. And he, in uh, 1902, decided to dedicate the rest of his life to studying volcanoes. But he was very ready to pull apart a hearing aid to, to listen to the ground and um, make all kinds of uh, apparatus and use photography. And he also traveled to many volcanoes, uh, Vesuvius, Etna, he was in Japan, Hawaii, in the Caribbean. And so he had, I would say, one of the first really kind of synthetic knowledges of uh, different kinds of volcanic activity. And he also saw 
Volcanoes is very much a part of what makes a planet habitable for us and I, I really like that theme and I thought it would resonate with True to Nature.